Welcome to my presentation, which talks about the network concept within the framework of internationalization theories. My name is Mario Blovig, and you will find further details to read in chapter two of the textbook, Market Entry Strategies, Internationalization Theories, Concepts and Cases. At the end of this session, you should be able to explain contents and discuss conceptual weaknesses of uh, recently emerging internationalization models, namely the network concept. What happens in a firm happens in relationships. That's a direct quote of uh, Jan Erik Malner and Jan Johansen. In 2017, um, both scholars are known for developing the Uppsala concept. And um, after reviewing the publications and the development in global business, in between the first publication of the Uppsala concept in 1977 and 2017, which means 40 years, Johansen and Van um, considered uh, to contribute to the network concept um, within the academic literature. So first of all, let us the define the major contents of the network concept of the network theory A network is a model or metaphor that describes a number of entities that are connected in the case of international industrial networks these entities are actors for example firms institutions suppliers logistics firms banks involved in creation processes converting resources into semi-finished or finished goods and services. A firm's changing internationalization situation is a result of its positioning in a network of firms and their relationships to each other. So when we talk about the network theory, we basically distinguish interorganizational relationship approach and the interpersonal relationship approach in business to business networks. So in case of a firm's positioning in business to business networks, that is called interorganizational relationship approach. And here, researchers target to figure out a firm's positioning in a network, figure out firm's positioning through relationships to other entities. And uh, these relationships can be made through international joint ventures or contractual relationships, such as licensing agreements, licensing agreements original equipment manufacturing agreements and others. Opposite to the interorganizational approach, there's an interpersonal relationship approach. And here, um, scholars target to figure out personal relationships. For example, the role of the founding entrepreneur to others, such as co-founders, foreign entrepreneurs, financial support is in course of the firm's internationalization process. So the interorganizational relationship approach deals with markets. Markets are networks of firm relationships in between suppliers, customers, competitors, and other stakeholders. These firm relationships are institutionalized, for example, through long-term contracts and international joint ventures. And the firm's business network insider positioning provides access to privileged resources, for example, market knowledge, 
which serves as the basis for competitive advantage for the firm. In contrast, a firm's network outsider position makes it successful global market positioning difficult or even impossible. And uh, this message is illustrated here in that figure. We will see here the focal firm, focal firm of interest, as an example, holds in business network insider positioning through various contractual, formal or informal relationships to other firms. That means the firm has access to knowledge, has access to business markets, has access to efficient logistics, technologies, money. But uh, these firms here, just as an example, they are not connected to that network and they're holding business network outsider positioning. And according to the network theory, business network insider uh, through the access to market knowledge and technology knowledge, they have better prerequisites to gain competitive advantage, whereas business network outsiders are in a rather difficult situation to gain competitive advantage. And um, the shorter the product and technology life cycles, the higher the investments in research and development activities, and the shorter the time to gain back um, these investments through own sales, the more important is in business network insider positioning because that allows the firm in best case to gain access to recent technology trends, to market knowledge, and uh, that is uh, at the end uh, huge advantage for that firm being located within a business network. Opposite to the inter-organizational approach, there's an interpersonal relationship approach, which mainly focuses on the entrepreneurs of a firm who develop and maintain personal relationships to other individuals of a business network for example, based on personal experience and trust. Bilateral personal relationships between individuals provide access to valuable market knowledge. And market knowledge allows rapid internationalization after the firm's founding. And that is, by the way, the basis of the international new venture and bond global concepts. And this access to knowledge is done through personal relationships, which reduce uncertainty about the global markets. The network theory um, claims that the market indicates a system of social and industrial relationships among various parties across industries and countries. By entering international business networks, firms gain international knowledge through learning from other network actors, which reduces market uncertainty and helps gaining competitive advantage. Firms, entrepreneurs that are able to internationalize rapidly after the firm's foundation often have established personal relationships with other firms and entrepreneurs abroad. And as a consequence, they are intensively embedded in international business structures, which supports their international market entry activities. In uh, 2003, Johansen and Wallner uh, combined the incremental internationalization process concepts 
such as the Uppsala concept and the network theory. And um, as a result, uh, they claim that international expansion uh, is a consequence of the firm's establishment of relationships with other industry actors, such as suppliers, customers, and other stakeholders, for example, banks, logistics firms, but also universities. Firms do business and customer supplier relationships in the foreign target markets. They learn partner specific behaviors, su such as willingness and ability to maintain and develop the relationship. For example, the better develop the business to business relationship in between a supplier and the customer, the more trustful our order forecasting Order forecasting reliability is higher and um, also both partners uh, hopefully develop a higher order flexibility and um, their target to keep promises related to the business. So the more developed, for example, in relationship between a supplier and the customer, the more stable the business, the better prerequisites for both parties to gain competitive advantage. As a result, the partners learn about each other and how to coordinate their activities in ways that strengthens their international business. Such relationship increases the firm's commitment in the foreign market. Experience in relationship development assumes that when interacting in business engagements, the involved partners are able to develop learning skills that are used in other international business transactions. These skills include how to get in touch with new business network actors, for example, new customers or suppliers, and expertise on knowing how to develop and deepen relationships with them. Coordinating experience concerns customer supplier relationships, for example, regarding new product developments or just in time delivery schedules. It also concerns coordination between the supplier and the customer in order to make both parties value chain activities more efficient. As a result, relationships of the business network are intensified. However, as for all internationalization theories, the network theory comes along with conceptual weaknesses. The concept itself tends to be very complex. Um, Scholars, researchers never ever have the complete picture of an industry network because it is changing permanently every day, every hour, every minute. And uh, therefore, empirical verification, empirical evaluation of an actor's positioning in the network is challenging. You have to conduct in depth research, which is uh, resource, time, and money consuming. A firm's developing and maintaining bilateral relationships in the network is also for the firm itself resource consuming that we should not forget. Uh, because in order to ma maintain bilateral relationships, intense bilateral relationships, you have to frequently meet, talk to, for example, suppliers, to your customers, which um, of course contributes gaining a competitive advantages, but the firm's management should be aware that they should allocate corresponding resources in-house to manage these relationships over a longer period of time. And uh, these resource commitments may offset network insider positioning advantages in worst case. 
And uh, we should not forget that uh, there is always a risk of opportunistic behavior of an, one network partner that should be not underestimated. Uh, as you may know, as you learned from the academic literature, for example, most of the international joint ventures fail for various reasons. But one important reason is that one partner targets, aims to take out more from that joint venture activities than that partner is willing to invest in terms of its resources. And uh, that causes then that, for example, one partner takes out more in terms of knowledge. And um, if this partner is not willing to contribute corresponding resources, um, then um, that joint venture will fail and um, that means also learning through bilateral relationship in this case simply doesn't work. So partner selection is very, very important. And um, network outsider and network brokerage positions provide alternative potentials for developing innovative business ideas. For those who are interested to get involved more deeply, there's a very prominent publication by Bird in 1992, who um, develops alternative potentials. And uh, among others, Bird claims that if you are not, if the firm is not connected to the main business network, if it holds a network outside the ship positioning, then that company has even better prerequisites to stay, to develop innovative capabilities, to develop fresh ideas, new ideas, new business solutions, because simply they are not that much connected with the mainstream of firms. And um, I think there's really something in it to consider. This is the literature I have used to develop this presentation and uh, what I would like to recommend to you. Here, BERT 1992, structure holds the social structure of competition. BERT claims uh, that it might be recommendable not to hold in business inside a ship positioning. If, you, if the firm targets to develop innovative ideas. Okay. Thank you so much for listening and watching and all the best for you. Great success in your business life or your academic study. Thank you so much for watching and bye-bye.